So as we get our next special guest to come on up, the thing that is so amazing about you know the conversations that we hear and, and we saw you know when when Mark and Leonard were up here, you know the importance of having not just a patient go through the journey, but having the caregiver there to be part of that journey too. And um, when I had the opportunity to meet our next speaker, um, one of the things that I got was so thrilled about was I didn't meet just Michaela. I got to meet her family. Um, and her mom and her grandma and her grandpa are here with us today. Um, the journey of a patient is easier when there are people around them that love them. Would you please give Michaela's family a round of applause? Uh, so I'm Dr. Pasternak. I'm actually uh, Michaela's physician, and I was asked to join her here um, today. I actually, well, first they, they told us to sit up here and act as if we're just out to lunch and have a conversation, but I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> um, and I, I, after hearing the talks earlier, I totally changed um, everything I was going to say. Uh, so it's a little bit longer than, than when it started. Um, but since, since this uh, event is about the voice of the patient, um, I'm definitely going to let our superstar, my superstar patient, Michaela, tell her story. She's had quite a uh, journey and battle, but um, I've never met anyone uh, stronger. Her TikTok page spoke volumes about her character, and um, she'll explain why I use past tense. Um, and uh, her perseverance and her maturity for her age is uh, unparalleled. Uh, but to preface the story, I myself have uh, I was diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease when I was in college, and um, like many people who spoke earlier, that diagnosis shaped my, my career, my life. Um, so it, it, rather than suffer from the disease and let it, let it control me, um, I've let it fuel me and my passion in uh, and devoting my life to treating children with um, inflammatory bowel disease as well as um, get involved in uh, research and, and advocacy, um, and as earlier uh, mentioned, also to, to be kind. Um, I, I, I couldn't have said that better myself. I think Claire um, really touched on an important thing that I try to teach our um, residents and, uh, and medical students. I'm at Phoenix Children's, um, and I always tell them that I would much rather have uh, a physician who is empathetic and has a great bedside manner than the highest board score in the world. Um, and and um, i not saying I had a terrible board score, but, <laughs> but, but I think that the, what's really shaped, I think, my career and, and, and made me have passion and love what I do is connecting with my patients and and, and listening to them and being on their level as opposed to getting offended if a family member comes in and says, uh, there's something wrong, I think we're missing something. I, the parents are always right. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's, it's, if they say something's wrong, something's wrong, and it's our job to figure it out. Um, so, did you hear that? I saw you point to your mom. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, like, like Leonard, um, I also have a hard time saying no, but advocacy, mentorship, and helping these amazing kids is, is worth it. Um, I never realized how much we can make a difference, um, and Shannon, um, Shannon knows I'm knee deep in, she dragged me into this advocacy ring, and I am like knee deep in, in advocacy, um, realizing how important it is, again, alluding to, to Claire's comments earlier, um, how important it is to, to make sure that what we are choosing for our patients as physicians is what's done and not being dictated by payers, um, insurers, etc. Um, I've got a, 
a new manuscript that's going to be coming out that's that's going to be that's pretty informative and, and interesting um, recently uh, met with Bernie Sanders' team about some legislation that they're hopefully not putting out regarding uh, inflammatory bowel disease and care. And, and it's been really amazing just seeing that you can get to that level um, and, and be involved and, and fight for, for what's right. Um, and it turns out kids were never even considered in any of this legislation when it comes to a lot of these bills. So um, anyway, um, I actually just found out about this association through Shannon um, and been looking through the websites and seeing everyone involved and, and um, it's fascinating and I definitely think there needs to be more collaboration um, with, with us, with, with the pediatric realm and, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, but anyway, that's, this was like a lot shorter before but you guys gave me a lot to think about and talk about. So I am not... I am not the highlighted speaker. We'll pass it over to Michaela. All right, so I know most people talk about the day that they were diagnosed as the day they will never forget, but the day I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease is a day I will never remember. I was five years old, and my biggest concerns were monsters under the bed and getting my list to Santa on time. Five is a tough age to be diagnosed with Crohn's disease, especially when bathroom humor is the height of comedy, comedy in kindergarten class. The word poof would send all my friends into fits of giggles for, for hours, but poof was my number one concern for me and my parents. My mom tells me she took me to the doctor just to be told I was being stubborn about going to the bathroom at school and that the, my lack of di appetite was a type typical kid thing. She said they recommended Miralax and sent us home. I, cont I continued to lose weight and was in constant pain. It took another two months before I had the first of what would be many colonoscopies and finally got the answers we were looking for, Crohn's disease. We tried a few medications before we landed on Remicaid, and for four years, we, things went very well. But then, as often happened, my body started to fight the medication, and I had some pretty big setbacks. The doctor talked about changing medications, but at this point, I had an actual voice in my treatment. After all, I was 10 now and had a lot of opinions. I had followed people on social media with Crohn's and was learning all about the different ways to treat my disease in addition to the medication, including nutrition and mental health. My doctor told me that my parents, my doctor told my parents that putting a kid on a restricted diet was a waste of time and to focus on the meds. I rolled my eyes a lot during this consult. <laughs> It was around then that my parents heard about a pediatric gastroenterologist that was great at treating kids with a whole body approach, not just the IBD aspect. And that was how I met this guy right here. He had his work cut out for him with me. Immediately after we went, I suffered seizures, fractures from osteoporosis, fistulas, and hair loss. He assembled the warriors immediately, and suddenly I had a dermatologist, neurologist, endocrinologist, nutritionist, and psychologist. We talked about meds, but we talked about meds, but we also talked about the other ways to treat this disease. I was only a kid, but he actually talked to me, asked my opinions and recommendations. He treated me with respect and included me in every step. Here we are with just a few ways. This, here are just a few ways he has supported me over the years. That addi in addition to his medication re recommendations have helped me get where I am. He encouraged me to go to Camp Oasis, a summer camp for kids with IBD. I was unsure about going away th th without my parents, but I found out Dr. P would be there. I said, sign me up. Best decision I ever made. He also connected me with a junior IBD board that raises awareness and funds for IBD research. 
I had a TikTok account that I used to document my journey and raise awareness about IBD that gained 30,000 followers. It was eventually banned due to my age, but Dr. P fought to get it back, stating it was a great outlet for me to share my journey. It didn't work, but I appreciated the effort. <laughs> he has fought my battles with the insurance companies, and when I started asking questions about surgery that could help, he actually listened to me. I followed many people with IBD on social media and learned the benefits of these surgeries. And despite my sources, he never made fun of me. I had the colectomy last February and have felt great ever since. I have grown three inches and started ice skating and rollerblading again. Don't tell my endocrinologist. Apparently not the best pastimes for those with osteoporosis. Long story short, the name of this conference is The Voice of the Patient, but sometimes it is hard as a kid to have your voice heard. But I think my generation is underestimated in our knowledge and awareness. In this age of social media, we connect with fellow warriors and share our experiences. We learn about new treatments, nutrition, and connect on a deeper level. Listen to these kids. We need more doctors like Dr. Pasternak here. Doctors that collaborate and partner with their kids in their care and become their voice when others won't listen. I am a part of a generation that has grown up with this technology and know how to use it to improve our care and knowledge. After all, if you trust us how to convert a PDF and attach it to an email, you can trust us to be a voice in our own care. Thank you.